Hello everyone. On your screen, you will see the list of new features which are included with the release of Fidina 3.4.3. So here are the six features that we are going to discuss about today. And then we have nine enhancements. So let's see these one by one. So the first one is SMS package management. So here I log in into my accounts.fidina.com panel. So this is the place where you create the school. So here you will see the schools that you've created. So I have created two schools in this panel and one multi school group. Now let's go to company and see what is SMS package management. So here you will see this option of SMS. And here you will see the UI is changed. Earlier, you could do SMS settings in this screen. So you will get username, you will get password, host URL and other fields to be filled in directly. But now you can create SMS packages. To create an SMS package, click on this option, which is create SMS package. Now here you can set up the name of the package the provider name, message limit, the validity of this package and the character limit, which is by default 160 characters and can be overridden as per the service provider. Now let's understand this by an existing SMS package that I've set. So I've created SMS package as the name of the package and I filled in the SMS provider details. The message limit, 600 messages are allowed till 31st of August 2017. So this is the validity which you can select from here. Character limit is default 160. And then you will see parameter mappings. So here earlier we used to have username and the value against that username. But now we have combined the parameter and the username. So you will see against username, I have written user ID and against user ID, I have written the value of that user ID. So this is how we'll be creating the parameters. So here similarly for password, I have written the password and then what is the actual value against that password? and then the sender name. So all the schools or the multi-school groups inside this company will follow the sender name that you mentioned here. It means when the students or the parents or the employees receive SMS, it will be from this name, net SMS in my case. Now, if you want to allow the schools or the multi-school group to be able to change this sender name. Then you can select this option, which is sender name modification enable. So now that means that the school will be able to give their own sender name instead of net SMS. Similarly, multi-school group will be able to assign their own sender name for their schools. Then we have host URL. This is similar to what we had earlier. The success code, the message and the phone number. So these are the parameters, the last two that you see. Success code, the value against the success code. Host URL as per what is provided to you by the SMS provider in the API documentation. So like this, I have added SMS package as the package name. You can add multiple SMS packages now. Earlier, we could only have one SMS package and we could give, assign it to the schools by inheriting the SMS settings. Now we can have more than one SMS packages. So you can create another SMS package here. So you will see I have already created two SMS packages. SMS package, the first one, 
new SMS package, the second one. You can see the SMS limit is 600. The validity is what we've set when we created this SMS package. Available SMS is currently 600. Now we can assign the SMS package to the schools. So earlier, when you used to create a new school, you used to get an option here, inherit SMS settings. And the school, if you check that, the school would be able to use the same SMS settings. But now, since we can create more than one SMS package, we can assign the schools from here itself. So you will see this option of schools coming against this package name. When I click on it, you can check this SMS package details and then assign a school or a multi-school group which will be using this SMS package. So currently you can see I have not assigned any school or multi-school group to use this SMS packages. I have created two schools here by the name PRG and Arun and one multi-school group by the name ABC. Now let's assign the SMS package to the schools and the multi-school group. So here we'll go to company, SMS and click on schools in front of the SMS package that you want to assign to the schools or multi-school group. Click on add a multi-school group or school. It means assigning an existing group or a school. Now here you can select which, what kind of school you want to assign. Is it a normal school or is it a multi-school group? If I select school, I will get the two schools that I have created, which was PRG and Arun. So let's assign this package to PRG school. So here it shows me available SMS, which is the total SMS of the package, which was 600. I can assign a lesser number of messages for this school PRG and also give a validity, which should be before the validity or on the same day of the validity of the package. So let me give the validity like this. So I can assign a package to PRG school, the same SMS package, but not the full assignment. I have taken 100 messages to be used by PRG school. So now you will see multi-school group or school which is assigned. In this case, the school PRG, it shows the validity, allotted SMS 100, and available SMS is 100 since we have not used them. Discount will decrease when the school starts using the SMS. Now, if you see here, available SMS reduce to 500 from 600 in this package. Now, let's assign the same package to another school. Let's say we have Arun school and we want to assign 200 messages to this school. And we can also set the validity the same way we had done for PRG school. So you can see it gets added to the list of schools that are assigned to use this SMS package that we earlier created. And the SMS, available SMS, is now reduced to 300. Now let's assign multi-school group. So here I'll select the type to be multi-school group and I'll get that ABC group that I've already created. I'll give the message limit. So let's use all the messages. Available is 300 and I'm mentioning 300 here and I can set the validity as well. So now if you see for this SMS package, there are three kinds of schools who are going to use it. ABC, which is a school, PRG, which is a school, sorry, ABC, a multi-school group and PRG and Arun, which are schools. At any point, you can remove 
the schools or multi school group from using this SMS package by going to their settings and clicking on remove SMS package. Also, you will see this option of the status which is active or inactive. So in front of the school, you will see active option or inactive option. You can activate the SMS package for this school by making it active from the status. So like this, we can assign an SMS package that we've created to multiple schools and multi school groups and we can activate them or deactivate them at any stage. Now, as I said, in the company, in the SMS settings, we can have more than one SMS package. So here you will see I've created one more, which is new SMS package. Now here I can assign schools to this SMS package also. So let's assign a school. We'll select PRG as a school to be assigned. And for this SMS package, the available SMS was 900. Let's say the school will be using 200 and we'll set some validity. So here you can see that PRG will be using new SMS package as well as the other SMS package but at a time only one will be active. So you will see by default the new one becomes inactive. So if you want to activate this SMS package for PRG, the other one will by default become deactivated. So if we see this SMS package PRG status, it will be inactive because we have activated the other SMS package. So that means you can assign more than one SMS package to the schools, but at a time only one will be active for the school. So this is about the, one of the new features that we have, which is SMS package management. Now let's see the next one, which is sorting students when marking attendance and when entering marks or grades. So let's see what is this option. So I'm logging in as an administrator and under academics, I can find attendance, attendance register. Now I'll select a batch and if you see, you will get this option sort by name or roll number. If you have enabled roll number, you will be able to see the sorting based on roll number as well, which it will show in the bracket here. So I have sorted based on roll number here and I can take the student attendance. By default, it will come sorted by name, the first name of the students. So you can now set the sorting option for attendance. The same is applicable for daily attendance or subject wise attendance. So not only this, when you are entering marks, so when we go to examination, exam management, I'm selecting one assessment, one exam that I've created. And here you will see that you can sort the students now based on their name, based on their admission number and based on their roll number. So you will get these three kind of sorting that you can do when you are entering marks as a teacher or as an exam manager or as Fadina administrator. So this is the second feature that we have sorting the students by their name or roll number when marking attendance by their name, roll number and admission number when entering marks or grades. Let's see the third feature now, P transaction reference number. 
So let's go to collecting fees which is under finance. Now when collecting fees from students for every transaction that we are going to create we can provide a reference number based on the payment mode. So I'll select the batch here and the fee, the academic fee and here you will see one option that appears which is the reference number. So based on the payment mode like currently I've selected cash so it shows me as reference number. If I select online payment it comes here as transaction ID and so on. For check number I'll get it as check number for DD, DD number and any other number that you want to mention here. So this is the reference number that you will see which you can fill in when you are collecting the fee. So for example I am mentioning payment mode to be cash and I am giving reference number which can be alphanumeric like this and I can collect the full amount or the partial amount. I will mention the payment node. So let's take a partial amount here and collect the fee. So you will see that a receipt number is generated here and when I click on it I'll be able to see the details of the payment that I have done. So the UI of this receipt is changed. You can see here it shows the receipt number, the student name, the roll number, the due date, the payment date and the particulars, the total amount of the fee and how much the student has paid. It also shows the due amount here. It shows that it is paid by cash. It shows the reference number for this receipt. So this is the receipt that is generated. And you can also click on print summary. This will give you another kind of receipt which shows you the same details as you used to have when you used to print a normal receipt. So now we have introduced this receipt as a separate receipt and this print summary as a separate receipt. Print summary will show you all the details with payment history included. Whereas this receipt will give you only the payment details of that particular transaction and not the payment history. And we can use this reference number to search the receipt. So let's see another module that we have introduced which is fee receipts list. So we'll go to finance and finance reports and you will see this new option that appears which is fee receipts. This is where you will be able to see all the receipts, all the transactions that are done within this duration which is by default last 30 days and you can change that from here. So it lists you all the receipts. You, if the list is long you can search the receipt by the number like this and you can see the details. You can also view the receipt from here by clicking on the receipt number. Now the reference number can also be used to search a receipt. So here we can go to advanced search and we can mention the reference number like this and the receipt with the matching reference number will come like this. So in the finance module, a new page called fee receipts is added. So here you will be able to see fee receipts for the payments which are made by employees, students or guests. So that means the normal fees 
transport fees hostel fees and the instant fees so all kind of fees all kind of incomes from any kind of payer it can be student employee or a guest will be listed in this fee receipts module now let's see the next feature which is batch wise student report in cc so here we'll go to examination report center and we'll see cc reports and here you will see this option which is batch wise student report so this is a new link that will appear and here you can create a basic type cc report so that means you will see this report type option to be basic report that means it is a report in pdf format for all the students of the batch and it will show the grades obtained by the students in both scholastic areas and co scholastic areas so when i generate report you will see it gets downloaded like this it shows the status to be in queue and i'll be able to download the file when it is success let me show you that file so it will be a zipped folder which will have the list of all the students report cards for cc so all these are the names of the student followed by their admission number and their report so i'll open one report to show you how it looks like so this is the report the cc report that you can give to the student and you will get this kind of report for all the students together so as you can see it is a basic kind of report right now meaning that it it has term 1 term 2 and overall together now we are going to enhance it and get more options for this kind of report but currently it is basic type so you'll get this for all the students in the batch together as a zipped folder when you download the file from here and the last feature that we have introduced is the language addition so in general settings fedina is also available in american spanish now so here when i select the language i can see american spanish to be one of the languages that i can use for fedina so these are the new features that fedina 3.4.3 brings to you now let's see enhancements the first enhancement is student wise report fee payment details so i log in as a student now so i'm using the admission number of a student and i log in into his profile and then we'll see the change under the fees for the student so here the student can go to my profile to view his fees details under more so here i can check the fee information and you will see now the fee information of the student the ui has become better so this is the previous batch of the student the student is currently in kindergarten 2 he was earlier in kindergarten 1 so that means he was batch transferred from kindergarten 1 to kindergarten 2 and i can check in kindergarten 1 he has two unpaid fees so when i click on this option the details will show like this so it shows general fees status to be unpaid amount so this much amount is due out of the total amount so like here 1000 is due out of this total amount and the due on date is also shown So this is for his previous batch. For his current batch, also he can check 
the general fees and the library fine details. Not only these, he can also check the hostel fees, the transport fees and the instant fees. So any kind of income for the student will get listed here. Now if the student or the parent wants to pay, they can click on the title of the fees here. And the same particulars as we used to get earlier will appear and he'll get this option of paying the fees if online payment is enabled by the administrator. So if this is enabled, he can fill in his card details and make this fee payment. And not only for the current fees, he can also do this for his previous batch fees by clicking on the fee and then paying that. Now let's see the same view as an administrator. So I log in as an administrator and I'll go to this option of fees headwise report. Student fees headwise report under fees. And here I'll go to student wise report. I'll search the same student or any other student for which I want to check the fee details. And again, you will see the same view, but for the administrator, it shows total paid, the total balance as well. So here I can click on this and get to see the other details similarly here. So if the student is coming and wants to pay this fees now, again, you can click on the title of the fees. It will take you to the same page where you collect the fees generally and you can collect the fee from the student. So this is the same view, but for the administrator. Now let's see the next enhancement, which is student roll numbers in custom reports. So here using custom report option, we can create any kind of report related to the profile details of student and employee. Now, in student, we've added an option to have roll number as an extra column. So let me show you that. I'll create a report. Class 1, student information. And here, I'll select the batch to be class 1. So this is the general way in which we create the custom report and here which all columns we want to see. So here let's say we want to see the admission number, the first name, the gender of the student and now we can also have roll number as an option. So you will see this, you can make roll number as one of the columns now. So this is the enhancement and you can also reorder it. Let's say we want to see it after admission number. So here we can reorder this and create this report. So this report gets created and we can view the report like this. So here as well, you can sort the admission number, the roll number, the first name. So when generating a custom student report, you can now include student roll numbers to be displayed as a column in the report. The other enhancement is searching for students and employees using their names when issuing library books. So I'll go to academics and library. And when earlier I was issuing a book, I had to search the student by his admission number, the employee by his admission, by his employee ID. But now I can search the students or the employees by their first name, middle name or even the last name. So here you will see I'm searching the student by his last name and I get all the matching results. I can also search the student by his first name like this. So this is the new enhancement where you can search using the first name, middle name or the last name 
for the student or the employee. Rest of the functionality remains same. Now let's see another enhancement which is functional and cosmetic changes to timetable. So let's see one by one the changes that we've introduced in timetable. So the first one is you can assign more than one teacher to a time slot. So here when I created the timetable and I select a batch, you will see that in a single slot, I was able to assign only one teacher. For example, if you see for Monday, 11.35 a.m. to 12.45 p.m., I have assigned one teacher to be taking this class. But now, you can assign one more teacher to be taking the same class. So you can click on this and select the subject. Denny is already assigned to be taking mathematics. So let's assign Rake to be taking the same class. So here you can see that I have assigned Denny as well as Rake to be taking the same class in the same time slot. This may be useful when you have a head teacher and an assistant teacher in the same class. So let's do it for a new slot. For example, for Tuesday, 9 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. So I'm selecting this slot. And for English, I'll be assigning both the teachers together to be taking this slot. So I can assign both of them like this. So you can see both the teachers will be shown to be taking this slot. Now when I was doing this assignment, there was a pop-up that was coming which was asking me to assign and remove, assign and retain or cancel. That was coming since Alice I've already assigned in another batch in the same timing. So that means you will be indicated by clashes when you are setting up the timetable for the students. So any kind of clash that is happening for the teacher, it will be shown to you. You can either assign and remove it or retain it. So let's see that example now. So here I'll select a batch which is C2A 2015. So here you will see that for Monday, Flexi is the teacher who is assigned between 11 a.m. to 12.20 p.m. So we have assigned Flexi E33 to be taking English on Monday for C2 batch. Now let me select another batch. And let's try to assign the same teacher on the same day in the same slot. So it shows it should give me an error. So let's say I'm again assigning Flexi from this duration but in a different batch. So let's see the kind of clash that it shows. So it shows here Flexi has another class scheduled with the batch that I just showed you earlier which was C2A 2015 for the subject English. So here I can assign and remove it or assign and retain it. So generally this will be a conflict and you should assign and remove it. Now in case you want to retain it, it will be denoted in the teacher's timetable also. So let's see that I'm assigning and retaining Flexi to be taking English here in this batch as well as in the other batch in the same time. So let's see the teacher timetable of this teacher. So we've done UI changes to teacher timetable as well. So I'm selecting Flexi here. You will see the list of teachers now will come like this. I'm selecting the teacher and you can see on Monday it shows the class here. So 11 a.m. to 12.20 this teacher is assigned C2B 
as well as C2A. The reason it is a clash is because we have done a sign and retain when we were shown the warning. So now you can see that a teacher's timetable will indicate if there is a clash between classes. So you can go and change this assignment. And since we can assign more than one teacher to be taking a class, a subject in a batch, so that means that both the teachers will be able to take attendance. For example, if you see for, let's say for Tuesday, we can see between 10.20 and 11.30, we have assigned two teachers to be taking mathematics. So both these teachers will be able to mark subject-wise attendance for this batch. So let me log in as one of the teachers. And I'll go to academics, attendance, attendance register. And you can see the batch is listed here because I'm the teacher of this batch of mathematics. I select the subject and I can mark the students absent here. Also, as a teacher, I can check my timetable and I get an option to now print it as well. So earlier this option was missing for me to be able to print out or take a PDF report of this timetable. But as a teacher, I can log in and get a printout. Not only the teacher, the same is the case with the student and the parent. So they get an option to take a PDF report or a CSV report of the timetables when they log in into their profiles. There are few cosmetic changes in allocation of classroom as well. So let's see that one. So I'll go to classroom allocation and allocate. So here you will see that the UI has become more understandable. So if I see on Monday, the one that is highlighted by green color, it means that they are already allocated rooms. So here when I hover over it, you will see it shows the timing, the subject, the teachers. If it is more than one, it will show like this. And also it shows the classroom that is allocated. So A is the classroom. I can also delete that from here if I've allocated by mistake or if I want to change. Similarly, for this batch, it shows here. So the highlighted ones are already allocated and the normal ones you can now allocate here like this. And classroom allocation also shows you the clashes if you're trying to allocate the same room to different batches. So these are the changes to the timetable, which are a few enhancements that I've shown you. We've seen printable fee receipt. So this is the same option that I showed where you get to print a receipt for the current transaction besides having the payment history. Let's see that again. So when I'm collecting the fees, you will see this is the receipt. So this is that printable fee receipt which comes in a different format from the print summary. So it will not show you the payment history. It shows you the current transaction amount only. So for every fee transaction that is created in Fidina, it can be full or partial, a fee receipt is created. And each fee receipt can be printed on a newly designed layout by clicking on the receipt number the way that I have shown you just now. Another enhancement is in the CC reports. So let's go to examination, CC reports. And here, when viewing the student wise report, you can now view the report for each examination term or for both the terms together. 
So earlier, when I used to select the batch like this, I will get the details like this. So I get term one, term two, and overall together. So all the details I used to get together, but now I can, if I only want to view for term one or only for term two, I get this option to select. So here is where I can select term one. If I want to see term one details of this student or term two. So I get to see term wise report in student wise report for CC now. Unlike earlier where we could only see the term one, term two and overall report together. There is another enhancement in CC reports. The first small change is that the assessment wise report is renamed to consolidated report. So here assessment wise report is now consolidated report. And here when generating the consolidated report. So let me select a course and a batch. So you can now filter the report based on not only individual FAs or essays, but also groups like both essays, all FAs or each term again. So earlier you used to have only assessment wise, which was either FA1, FA2 till SA2. But now you can also have reports based on groups for the students. For example, I select term one here, which is FA1, FA2 and SA1 and I'll get to see the consolidated report for all the students together like this. And another enhancement is that the Arabic text translation has been enhanced. So that is in language. Another small change is that this internal messaging system is now called messages instead of reminder. So earlier we used to call it reminder. Now we call it messages. So these are the features and the enhancements that Fedina 3.4.3 brings to you.